Could you imagine losing 9,000 bitcoins that is currently worth over $123,400,000? And that is at today's prices of $13,500, where before, like a couple weeks back, two, three, it was at eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars, dollars $19,000. And you're also able to sell it for an extra 10 to 15%. So at that point, we're talking, especially if Bitcoin keeps rising to twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, hundreds of millions of dollars just lost. And this brings up two interesting scenarios where the first is there is billions of dollars in cryptocurrencies where currently their market cap's approaching $650 billion. There's billions of dollars that are just lost in space, right? And if not yet, well, we're going towards that as more people keep losing access to their wallets. And yeah, it's just, it's a weird little thing to think about, just billions of dollars. Does that help the price of Bitcoin? Of course. Now the second scenario is, how do you protect yourself from this? Anyways, my name is Michael Kubera. Let's stay tuned, 9,000 Bitcoins lost crazy. Okay, so I was interested because I saw something on Bitcoin Talk today talking about, hey, there's 8,999 point something Bitcoins in this wallet. Let's, let's check out the transactions. And I saw that there was a couple transactions that were just probably as tests or something like that. I don't know. There's various reasons why there could be transactions going into that wallet. And the last one was 2016. Now, I don't know if this is the exact same case as the one that was linked later to in the Bitcoin Talk thread, where it was another Bitcoin Talk thread from 2010. Well, this man, Stone Man, admitted to losing 8,900 something Bitcoins, like 9,000 Bitcoin. The, the number keeps fluctuating, but it looks like the 8,999 was his because he sent in one Bitcoin and it worked as a trial and then the other 8,999 are lost. All right, so let's read the post by Stone Man on the thread. So here are the details. He bought 9,000 Bitcoin on one of the exchanges and that was transferred. So uh, that was sent over to the client running on a Linux Live CD distro of Debian. I'm not a big fan of Linux. I know some of you guys are. Linux gets a little bit confusing, but back in the early days of Bitcoin, this is 2010, Bitcoin was spawned back in like late 2008 and it was like live in January 1st, I mean not January 1st, but in January in 2009. So this is like a year and a half after Bitcoin came about. Now the Bitcoin prices were very cheap here, but still considering 9,000 Bitcoin cost a lot of money, right? And that was a lot of money that was just lost and now it's ginormous, right? So it was confusing. 10 times more than it is today. And still today, there's people who are just like, this is too much for me, I can't do it, I need help. But he backed up the wallet to a flash drive. He sent one Bitcoin after that to himself to test it and he closed the client before any confirmations happened. So this is where it gets, uh, that's the key thing here. He closed down the client before any confirmations, then he shut down the system, he wiped the system disk loaded into memory and therefore the Bitcoin folder with it. So he loaded the system back up Copy the old wallet.dat file into the Bitcoin folder. And after some confirmations, the one Bitcoin balance appeared. And there was a transaction saying that the other remaining 8,999 was sent to another wallet. And uh, then he said the last thing I read on the forum threads that people have had problems like this before, but it seemed only when they were trying to reload an old wallet file. Now later on in the thread, you're able to find out exactly what happened where the 8,999 was sent to another wallet, which technically didn't render it lost, depending on whether he had the private key for that. This guy did it because there was multiple wallets. So let's say there's uh, one transaction, it gets sent over to the second transaction. Now, as soon as the second transaction happens, another wallet is therefore created. And there should have been a warning that alerts you that, hey, if you're gonna deposit more, suddenly the old backups are just like, they're rendered useless and it's gonna keep going to new addresses. And at that point, you wouldn't have shut down the system and would have made sure to copy everything and keep it all organized. But that didn't happen. And it's not a silly mistake. I mean, technically he was doing everything by the book. I mean, he should have waited a little bit longer and copied it all, but it's probably happened to a bunch of people, but with smaller amounts. Even me personally, I lost 0.9 Ethereum, not the same situation, but I lost 0.9 Ethereum as a test. 
Because I was going to send, like, I forgot what it was worth at the time. It was worth, like, 4000 or $5,000 or whatever Ethereum. And I wanted to send that over. And today, that would be, like, twenty five grand, boom, lost, or thirty grand, whatever it was. I got pretty upset that that 0.9 Ethereum is now worth, like, $700 or whatever, or 600 something. And really, it was just a mistake. I sent it over to a wallet. I had problems with this new wallet. Then I forgot about the password. Then it was just the, this whole mess for three weeks. I finally got access into the wallet again, and then I realized, oh, oh no access to the password. I do have the file and everything, but without the password, is screwed. So that Ethereum lost. There's plenty of people who just lost a bunch of Bitcoins. There's that one guy, 7,500 Bitcoins on a disk. And he's been searching around garbage dumps trying to find that disk. 7,500 Bitcoins, 9,000 Bitcoins here to send to a transaction that will never be opened unless there's like quantum computers in the future where these teams are like trying to hack into these lost wallets and maybe there's a chance to get into it. But that is like 0.01% chance. So in the future, right? We'll see what happens. But currently in this day and age, it's impossible. So yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. This guy lost his money. And even Satoshi Nakamoto, like there was a thread before where he was talking about that there could be some problems based on this system and eventually it was kind of fixed, but there should have been warnings. It was more complex to use back then. The person just lost that money. And ever since then, people have found out about this wallet. There was one transaction that was like 0.001 Bitcoin or something that was sent into it. And there was some like title that was sent from like, this one website, and I was thinking, oh, maybe that's an advertisement or something like that, like whatever, 0 0.001 Bitcoin last year didn't really cost that much. So yeah, I mean, hey, if you're one of the top, and the others were supposedly uh, transaction burns and stuff like that, or little tests. So the wallet hasn't been used though, and the guy hopefully kept his one Bitcoin at least, so he had, you know, that's interesting. That That's interesting to think about because Sure, he lost his Bitcoin, depending on what kind of price he purchased at, depending on what kind of price he purchased at, maybe that one Bitcoin would be able to recover the original funds that were lost, but then it hurts because then you're like, wow, so technically you're not a loss, but that's just a lot of, I don't know, bad emotions to live with. But maybe that one person got into Bitcoin further and decided to make some companies and he invested more and he was able to still become a millionaire regardless. Or he was turned away from this technology forever. And maybe he's not even here with us anymore. But uh, Stone Man on Bitcoin Talk hasn't really made much posts. He only made like 28 posts or whatever. So we're not really sure what happened. But that money's most likely lost. And if you want to find out further information, there will be links down in the description below. There's plenty of money out there that is just lost forever. And with such cases where you have 7,500 Bitcoins gone, 9,000 Bitcoins gone, and you have eventually, you know, out of the 21 million Bitcoins, let's say one, two, three million lost, no one's really going to be able to use them. Well, that makes the other coins that are in circulation, you know, because there's a difference between 21 million total coins and 16 there's 16 and a half million coins in circulation because you can look at both but the one that's going to matter is the circulation because if those ones are gone forever i mean hey it helps with the price right but it, well like looking at taking both things into account it helps with price because hey there's less coins to work with let's say you own one bitcoin you own 10 bitcoins 100 bitcoins more people want to buy it you're going to be able to hoard it and make more money off of that but it's just one of the very small factors that goes into so many variables of why Bitcoin's price is rising and why the hype is there. But hopefully you guys always remember to double check your passwords and your private keys and which exchange you're sending to and the addresses, double check it, try and copy and paste as much as possible and make sure that it is what you were copy and pasting, the first letter or number and the second and the last one, they all are the same. It's not you know off by one letter, off by one number, sent to the wrong address. Oh, whoops, I forgot to copy it last night. Because those could mean the fact that you lose a dollar or you could lose a hundred dollars. Now, in my personal case, I sold my 0.9 Ethereum wallet because I had a backup of that. And I sold it to a subscriber of mine for a dollar. I said, hey, here you go. At the time it was worth like $200 or something like that or 150. Here you go. I want a dollar, that's it. 
And out of the kindness of his heart, he said, if he's able to ever break it, well, cause with a you know password generator, then I think it's a keylogger or whatever. No, brute force. There we go. If he's able to ever do that, he'd split the profits with me, which I said, cool. You know, I never forced that, but it was interesting to think about. I don't think he's been successful with it, but there's plenty of cases where people are brute forcing wallets that are worth uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. I know people who have lost five to six figures just stuck in a wallet, and that's gotta hurt. So as much as it hurts for me, that hurts for them. There's cases like this. Maybe there's cases out there that are more, 10,000 Bitcoins just lost, 100,000 Bitcoins, boom. Who knows, maybe an exchange failed. Or remember that uh, Ethereum little update thingy where like a couple, like $150 million was frozen, in Ethereum parity. Yikes, that's crazy. Anyways, my name is Michael Cabrera. Thanks so much for watching today. Let's stay tuned for tomorrow. And Bitcoin is the future. Now the future is here. Happy New Year. Whatever.